Bamiyan didn't always look like this. In the 1960s and 70s, long before Afghanistan's brutal civil war, or anyone had even heard the word Taliban, Bamiyan was a thriving tourist hotspot. Up to 100,000 tourists a year visited here. It was so popular, it featured on travel programs. Like this one, featuring Mr. and Mrs. Linker from California, filmed in 1973. It was here that we would live in a yurt for several days while exploring the area. And so, well rested, we were ready to go out and explore the sites of Bamiyan, a very famous city, in fact, in, in, and an area, the whole valley, the Golden Valley of Bamiyan, is noted for an entire mountain range that was used by the Buddhists as a sacred place in centuries past. And that whole series of mountains there has Buddhist caves in it. But years of conflict and the destruction of the statues changed everything. Everyone in Bamiyan wants the golden days of tourism back. But in the post-war chaos that is Afghanistan today, protecting the old while building the new isn't that easy. There isn't enough land in Bamiyan, and everyone wants to build shops and restaurants and houses near the historical sites. It's one of our most serious problems, but we're doing our best to fight them, and we won't let them build anything near the site. But one recent addition did slip through the net. The Silk Road, Bamiyan's only luxury hotel. Thank you. It's very, very calm. So this is your Please. hotel? Yeah, thank you. So how long have you had the hotel? Just two months. Brand new? Yeah, it's brand new. And how's yeah. business? Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. Already? Yes. Can I have a look at one of the rooms? I'm dying yes, to see please. what it looks like. It's great. And they're all like this? Yes, all of the, this kind of rooms. So some of the person entered the room, so, wow, it's beautiful, cute, you know? So I'm very happy to see, yeah. But not everyone thinks the hotel has the wow factor. The Silk Road Hotel should never have been built where it was. The main objection I have about the Silk Road Hotel is the color of its outside. It's really ugly, and we've told them to change it. Yeah, local people is, you know, divided. So someone is very happy, someone is very not happy. So this is the situation in Afghanistan. It's some kind of the custom in Afghanistan. Yeah. Someone become happy, someone become not happy. For Governor Sarabi, the hotel offers much needed foreign investment and a hope of future tourism. From the outside, it's very nice building. Can be fit with the environment. And uh, the, when the tourists, when the um, people coming uh, in, in, inside Bamiyan, they need something, some facility. Bamiyan is one of the poorest places in Afghanistan. The average wage here is around 20 US dollars a month. So everyone here is agreed that tourism equals money. In Bamiyan's Bazaar, the gift shops are still open, but there's no one to sell to. What do you have for sale here? Show me. Uh, we have a few jewelry there, Afghan cultural jewelry. You'd like to buy? Well, it depends. What's, what's the price? These are cheap. What's your choice? We don't know. So how's business? Are you doing okay? It's not very good here because we don't have too many tourists now, like what we have before of the war. There are more than, in the months, more than 1,000, 2,000 tourists we have in Bamiyan. Right now it's not that much, just a few tourists coming to Bamiyan. And in a nation which makes daily headlines for violence, it's no real surprise the tourists have stopped coming. During a week in Bamiyan, we met just two intrepid backpackers seemingly unconcerned by the fighting in neighboring districts, only a couple of hundred kilometers away. For at least for the people I know back home, it's, uh, you know, I, I think there is pretty much expected to be a war around here and people being angry and, yeah, it's, uh, so far in Afghanistan, it's been really nice, really friendly people we met and uh, beautiful scenery, beautiful scenery. I don't want masses of tourists to come here and ruin it all and turn it into Rome or something. You know, I want it to be 
left the way it is now, but that's probably a bit selfish. And I think for the people of Afghanistan, it would, it would probably help a lot more if there's more tourists here. We decided to explore the tourist potential of the Bamiyan Valley ourselves. The whole area is overflowing with old castles and archaeological sites. We headed to Lake Bandiamir, the Bamiyan Valley's second most famous attraction after the Buddhas. It was once a must-see stop on the Hippie Trail in the 1960s, and we were told a place still popular with Afghans. We've been travelling through wilderness for about three hours, and suddenly here is this extraordinary azure blue lake. Bandi Amir's crystal clear blue waters are thought to be sacred by many Afghans. The paddle boats are a relic of pre-war innocence. In more peaceful times, a place like this might be packed with tourists. But the only foreigners we could find were from India very much enjoying their family holiday in what is supposed to be one of the world's most dangerous countries. It's just stunning, it's left me speechless. It's just awesome, amazing. I have no words to explain, it's so beautiful. Weren't you scared? Not at all. In fact, I was. <laughs> had heard so many stories. And she told me we should take a guide along. I said, I mean, it's probably the safest place on earth. Bamiyan is supposed to be extremely safe and things. I was scared that there might be some terrorists. You know, this is what we hear, all the stories and all the news that comes to us in India and in the rest of the world. So actually nobody tells about the other part of the story. I can risk anything for seeing such beauty on earth. The Bamiyan Valley has numerous potential attractions, but the Buddha Cliffs will always be its biggest draw. But now those responsible for maintaining this unique site face a new challenge. The destructive legacy of the Taliban means there may be nothing left for future tourists to see. A lethal combination of damage caused by the explosion, together with natural erosion, means the entire cliff face could be in danger of collapse. You see from here, if, we f if this, uh, this part of the Buddha will be falling down, we will lose everything. Nothing will be remained from the history of the Buddha. I see a crack here. See, I see it goes, you know, from at the bottom of the Buddha to the top of the Buddha. It's just, you know, if we consolidate all of this crack, it needs a lot of money. How much money do you think it will take? Do you have any idea how much money you need to save this? Maybe 100,000 or 200,000 US dollars. So not a small amount of money, really? Uh, just for emergency consolidated. Right. So we need this amount of money, very emergency. $200,000 may seem like a small price to pay for saving such a world-famous site. But in a country where virtually everything needs emergency consolidation, there's not enough cash to go around. If the work here is successful and this unique site is protected, then the Bamiyan Valley could become a symbol of a resurgent Afghanistan. But as the security situation worsens across the rest of the country, the tragic past may come back to haunt the people of Bamiyan. Nowadays, we're really scared. We're worried because the Taliban has captured some new districts. Even here in Bamiyan, there are some people who sympathize with the Taliban, and they've threatened us. Believe me, when I say this fear stops me sleeping at night. It's very difficult to express my feeling about the return of the Taliban. I do hope that I won't see their faces around here again. May God not bring the Taliban again. I am a woman ready to defend my soil, and our men will defend it too. We don't want Taliban. Never again. This is our homeland, our soil. As long as I'm alive, I will defend it.
the Taliban years left an indelible scar on the landscape and people of the Bamiyan Valley. For now, it remains one of the most secure pockets of Afghanistan. But with the majority of aid money being diverted to the places where there is the most fighting, it's unclear how long Bamiyan can stay that way. I want to raise my voice for the international community. There are some places where there is no conflict and war. Please take care about these people also. One of the consequences can be this area cannot be safe anymore. If you have sense of being what your heritage has been, then I think you have the motivation and the desire to make all these other things work, like your hospitals and your, your school. The irreplaceable heritage of Bamiyan does not belong just to the Hazara people or to Afghanistan, but to the world. But rebuilding all that was lost can't begin until Afghanistan is at peace.